Okay, so we're looking at uh, examples for part two of the test. And again, you've got plenty of worksheets on Moodle. This is just a cross section of some of the questions. I was, stand I was standard. These aren't the questions, but I was standard. And again, I can't ask every question. I need to have questions where you're applying knowledge. So let's have a look. Uh, we'll be pausing it, and then when you're ready, come back. So the first one's a straightforward finding derivatives. So pause, and when you're ready, come back. Okay, so we've got a product in the first one. So we've got u and we've got v, so u dash equals 5, v dash equals 3e to the 3x minus 1, so y dash equals u v dash plus v times u dash. Now that answer is fine, but it's not factorised, so that final answer is 5e 3x minus 1 open bracket so I've taken the 5 and the e so I need 3x and I've taken everything out of the second so I just leave plus 1 okay second one okay that's your u that's your v u dash equals 2x over x squared f dash x over fx equals 2 over x v dash equals 1 so derivative equals v u dash minus u v dash over v squared x's cancel out and log x squared over x squared and that's the final answer x squared does not go into x squared you've got log x squared right moving on the next one some of the stuff with the with the new ones Okay, pause, and when you're ready, come back. Okay, so that's your fx. So the derivative is f dash x, which is 2, so minus 2, over square root 1 minus fx squared. Okay, so don't expand out the brackets. That's the final answer. And next one, we've got a u and a v. So u dash equals 1, v dash equals 1 over 1 minus x squared. So the derivative equals, doesn't matter which order you do. So I've got x times 1 over 1 minus x squared plus sine minus 1x times 1. And you can't simplify anything. Just tidy it up. Okay, moving on. Okay, so we've got to do some integrals. Um, second one, first one's indefinite, second one is definite. Okay, so have a go when you're ready. Okay, so looking at that, if that's fx, this is going to be a multiple of the derivative. So we can change that to a 2x and have a half out the front, e to the x squared dx. And so I've got a half of f dash x e f x, so I've just got a half of e f x plus c. Second one. Okay, so I've got... Okay, so there's the, the bottom is uh, x squared minus 2, so I've got 3 times 2x on the top line. So I've got 3 times, you know, f dash x over fx dx. So I've got 3 log fx, which is just x squared minus 1. And I'm putting in numbers, e cubed e, they probably won't simplify, but I'll just put it in anyway. Log e. Oh. Oh dear, e, e cubed, so I've got e6 minus 1 minus log e squared minus 1, close bracket, close bracket, and can't simplify anything. There's no log laws with minusing in between the terms. Okay. Okay, another integral uh, with the inverse trig stuff um, with, with limits. Okay, so when you're ready, pause and then come back. Okay, so we've got uh, a multiple. Okay, so we've got 4 on the top. And then it's going to be cos minus 1 um, x. Okay, it's 1 over minus 1 over 1 minus x squared. It's just cos minus 1. 1 to 0. So I've got 4. So cos minus 1, 0 minus cos minus 1. Cos minus 1, 1 minus cos minus 1, 0. That's okay, so I've got 4. So again, just a reminder, this just means what angle do you need for cos to be 1? Um, 
so the answer is just zero for the first one okay and what angle do you need for cos minus one to be zero and it's minus pi on two and so the final answer is just minus two pi okay moving on okay find equation of the normal the normal not the tangent to that at that so have a go when you're ready come back okay so y dash equals e to the x at x equals 2 y dash equals e squared therefore m of the tangent equals e squared and m of the normal equals minus 1 over e squared flip it and change the sign uh, at x equals 2 y equals what's the function again e squared minus 5 okay so it's an equation of a tangent so it's going to be y equals mx plus b got to find b so we've got e squared minus 5 equals minus 1 on e squared x is 2 so b equals e squared minus 5 plus 2 over e squared and so your final answer is y equals minus 1 on e squared x plus all of that mess e squared okay next one okay so we're doing some areas again with the new stuff and some limits okay so have a go when you're ready come back live okay so just do a sketch to make sure there's no unders under areas so that's y equals e to the 2x it's just straightforward x is minus 1 x is 3 so we've got a positive area so I don't have to worry about unders so area equals minus 1 3 e to the 2x dx okay so that's going to be e to the 2x over 2 3 minus 1 oh, not enough space equals I might see if I can cut that second part down okay equals okay so half e6 minus e minus 2 okay 3 2 is a 6 2 times minus 1 and it's an area so just put unit squared don't simplify unless you have to do decimals okay next one uh, it's a sine graph so it's an equal sign it's a the okay so so sign looks like that du -du -du -du. what's the three there minus three it's a one x so that's going to be two pi that's going to be pi and zero is there seven pi and six is just past pi so that means I've got one area and another area which I have to add I can't integrate all the way across so area 1 equals 0 2 pi 3 sine x dx and again sine goes to cos cos goes to minus sine so when you're integrating sine goes to minus cos take the 3 out cos x pi 0 3 minus cos pi minus or minus is a plus cos 0 so cos of pi is minus 1 and I got a minus so it's a plus 1 cos of 0 cos of 0 cos of 0 <sighs> cos of 0 is 1 as well so I got 6 so the first area is 6 second area area 2 equals from pi to 7 pi on 6 3 sine x dx 3 minus cos x minus cos 7 pi on 6 minus and minus is a plus so 
Cos of 7 pi on 6 is in the third quadrant, so it's going to be a negative, and I've got a negative there, which makes it a positive, and then cos of pi on 6 is root 3 on 2. Cos of pi is minus 1, so I get 3 root 3 on 2 minus 3, and so the total area equals 6 plus 3 root 3 on 2 minus 3 units squared for area. Okay. Okay, so we'll do a volume of revolution about the x axis from x equals 1 to x equals 4 in terms of pi. Okay, so volume is pi y squared dx around the x axis. And so if that's going to square it, then I'm going to square that as well. So pi, one, oh, sorry, one to four x plus three squared dx. Now, that's a linear function, so I don't need to expand out. It's just going to be add one to the power, divide by the power, divide by the derivative of the bracket, which is just one. The three can come out the front. So I'm left with 4 plus 3 is 7 cubed minus 1 plus 3 is 4 cubed. And on your calculator, so I've got pi on 3 times 7 cubed. Uh, turn your calculator on. 7 to the power of 3 minus 4 to the power of 3 equals 279. And then I'll just divide by 3 to see if it works. Yes, it does. So the answer is 93 pi units cubed for volume. Okay. Next page. You've got two pages to go. So I've got some growth and decay questions. So we've got a growth. We know that it's growth because the k value is positive And t is in hours. So we've got to check out what's happening there. So find the population after one day. So the initial population is 200. So the answer is going to be bigger than 200 and 24 hours in a day. So area equals 200 times e to the 0 0.073 times 24. I didn't ask for how accurate to be, so we'll just round to the nearest number. 0 0.073 times 24, close bracket equals, so to the nearest bacteria, it's 1153 whatever we're measuring in. Okay, so when will the population be 20,000? Well, it'll be more than a day because there's only 1,153 in one day, so the answer has to be more than a day or more than 24 hours. So 20,000 equals the initial population times E 0 0.073 times T. So 20,000 of 200... And take logs, okay, 2,000, so it's a log 100, equals 073t. So t equals log 100, point oh seven three. Go to the nearest day, log 100, divided by point oh seven three. Syntax error, made a mistake. Log 100, divided by point oh seven three. And so 63.1 hours. So you can work that in days. If the question asks you for days, then work it out in days. Okay, and we're up to the last question, decay. Okay, so we've got a decay question. So we've got a minus sign, not a growth, a plus sign. T is measured in days. K is the constant that we have to work out in the question. So we've got 95% after one day. We've got 70% after three days. Got to find K and then find the half-life. So the half-life is what's happening at 50%. Okay, so pause and have a go. Okay, so we don't know what the original amount is, but we're in percentages, so it doesn't really matter. So 95% equals 100% E to the minus K times 1, and 70% equals 100% E to the minus K times 3. So we divide. 95 over 70, the hundreds cancel out. So we've got minus k, minus a minus, so that's plus 2k. Division is 
uh, division of indices is division of bases add the indices so 2k equals log 95 over 70 so k equals that number whatever that is divided by 2 and we'll go to two decimal uh, four decimal places log 95 over 70 and divide by 2 so we get 0 0.1527 to four decimal places and now we can find the half-life so part b 50 percent equals 100 percent e to the minus 0 0.1527 t so those come down back to 0 0.5 then we take logs of both sides and divide by t Four point five four. I think we're doing in days. Okay, and I think that's the last one. Yep. So hopefully you got something out of it.